and welcome. In this video, we're going to show you how to make a simple color correction for an image taken in the incandescent style lighting. Those old bulbs that you may have in your house uh, cast a yellow hue, and we're going to show you how to fix that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and browse and bridge by clicking the little icon in the corner, and I'm going to jump over to my resources folder. And my resources folder has auto color one and auto color two. That's what I'm expecting you to download and put into your resources folder. I'm going to go ahead and double click autocolor1.jpg and see this weird, it's it's some type of amphibian turtle thing, I'm not sure what it is. But anyway, we're going to fix this. Now, the easiest way to fix it is to use an autotone, but I want to show you a little bit about the layers panel when I do it and make sure you can see the difference between the old one and the new one. So, I'm going to go over to my layers panel and I'm going to drag the background layer into the bottom here where it's a new layer icon. You could also have gone to layer and duplicate layer, would have done the same thing. Now this background copy layer, I want you to go ahead and get it in the habit of renaming layers. I'm going to call this one fixed because I'm going to fix it. Now notice that when I don't have any layer selected because I click down here below, both of these turn gray and I can't do anything on my picture. It says could not use the brush tool because no layers are selected. It's okay, I didn't want to use the brush tool, but I just want you to know what happened. Now you can work on either layer, okay? Whichever one is blue is the layer you're currently working upon and you can switch between them. So in our case we're going to click on the fixed layer, make sure it's blue and I'm going to apply an adjustment to it. I'm going to go image adjustments and I could go through all these different settings to try and figure out the vibrance, saturation, the color mix and stuff like that. But honestly, there's a just do it feature called auto tone. And when you click that, hey, the picture looks right. It's like it knew that you had taken it in incandescent lighting and it just fixed it. So now that it's fixed, I still have two layers. I want to show you what it was looking like before so you can swap between them. I'm going to click the eye on the layer, which is the quickest way to turn off the layer's visibility, to make it invisible. You just click it, and it's like it's a transparent sheet of paper. It's gone. So now I can see the background. I can go on top of it. Now, the layer stack is just like having a bunch of, you know, acetate sheets of paper on top of each other, um, like those old overhead projectors used to have. If something is completely solid, like this fixed layer is a duplicate of the original layer, it's solid, we can't see through to the background layer. So I want you to understand that the layers, just think of them right now as clear acetate with pictures or parts of pictures on top of each layer. Um, this here is uh, probably where we're going to stop this, but I want you to do it with one more picture before I um, let you go. Go ahead and do it on the auto color two, the links here, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to duplicate the background and we're going to rename that fixed. And then we're going to do image and auto tone and that fixes that picture as well. So now that I have these two pictures fixed, right now they haven't been saved. We need to save them. And the way we know they haven't been saved is that there's this little asterisk here by the name. So whenever there's an asterisk outside this parenthesis, it means you haven't saved it. You've done some change and you haven't saved it. So now the original file was a JPEG, a JPG file. And a JPEG image can only have one layer. I want to preserve both of my layers. So what I'm going to do is make sure that I resave this as a PSD. So I'm going to do File, Save As, and I'm going to go to my libraries, and I'm going to go to my documents, and because I have to turn this in, I'm going to click into the uh, chapter one folder. Let's see if I can find that here. Last name, first name, chapter one. Now, whenever you're naming it, you're going to use the naming convention. Here's the naming convention. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do F2013 dash first period underscore last name, first name. And this is going to be called auto color amphibian which I think it's an amphibian. I'm not sure. Now, you can put .psd at the end, like this, .psd. But that really doesn't do anything unless you also have it down here. 
So make sure that whatever you're doing, it agrees. So your format, we're going to save it as a PSD. Make sure it says PSD here. Okay. Because if you put .psd, but you change the format down here, it says JPEG, it's not going to know what type to save it in. And you'll probably have some problems reopening the file. So make sure that whatever you do, agree with what's down here. So I'm going to put .psd. So now this is going to be saved in a .psd format. I'm going to go ahead and click save. Now you think that that's a lot to write down, but honestly you only have to type it out once per chapter if you think about it. Because watch this. When I go to save this other one, I can do file, save as, and I'm going to go to libraries, documents, and I'm going to go into my uh, chapter folder. And so I can just click on this one, which has already got a lot of that mess in there, you know, last name, first name, all that stuff. And I can go out here and just change the end here to read LYNX. Now I want you to notice I have underscores everywhere. Don't use spaces, okay? Uh, it's very important that you save it this way, especially if you want to get a grade for it. So now this one's going to be saved, and it'll preserve both those layers as well. And that's it for this video.